This is Ted DeCorcia in the Mickey's Filet Mystery, Fat Hammer Guy. <laughs>
short of our human bondage. This is it and it's that. Before there's a weak smile. Of course, this is all very new to me, having myself watched the group. What do you suggest I do? You tell them to carry on as usual, that you will do all the doing. And before you take off, you get a description of the guy. As best as I can remember, he was rather handsome and blonde and, of course, young. Young. He says that as if his age was something sick and ugly. You go down to the street with him to his car. I suppose I needn't say I wish you the best of luck. You tail him in your jalopy up to his home in Scarsdale. It's a place that Jack, there are plenty of Jack, that is. He goes up the circular hardtop driveway to the main entrance while you park alongside the cypress trees that line the estate. He's only just shutting the front door behind him when you spot the side entrance door open. Out comes a guy, a handsome guy, blonde and young. He circles back of the house. You lick it across the lawn, but by the time you get around to the rear of the house, he's gone. But the way it turns out, he isn't as gone as you think. <laughs> Captain Pat Chambers of Homicide. You give Pat the facts you know. 
So it wasn't an accident. It was murder, and that's a fact. His wife and this boyfriend of hers wanted the old guy out of the way. A fact? An absolute fact. Uh, it's all very interesting, Mike. Look, pal, I didn't come down here to play games. Everything I've told you is true. You still didn't tell me how come you know it's true. Judson hired me to bodyguard him. He knew something like this was in the works. That's so? Yes, so. So how come Judson didn't come straight to us? I know this is going to sound crazy. He didn't want to involve in wife. Oh, no, that doesn't sound crazy at all. Are, are you having fun? Look, Mike, no, you look and listen. Justin was head over heels crazy about that dame he married. I can't explain it. Even he couldn't. How come you know so much about it? I told you he hired me, didn't I? I started telling him for his own protection last night, then I was sidetracked. Oh, yeah. I heard about the tailing you did last night. Huh? The boys down at the 18th Precinct filled me in. That dame you were mixed up with, Mildred Carney. Nice, refined girl. That it wasn't that way at all. When you were dragged into the station house, you smelled like a distillery. I thought you knew when you had enough of that stuff. I was tripped from behind. Yeah, but the contents of a bottle of bourbon. I tell you, Pat, the whole thing was a setup. Some people see pink elephants. You see murders that aren't murders. Take my advice, Mike. Go home. Sleep it off. But before you walk out, you remember that retainer check that Mark Judson gave you. You tell Pat about it. Sure, I believe you, Mike. All you gotta do is show me that check. You have it back to your office. You're going to shove that check right down his grinning mouth. You're going to make Patty every sarcastic word he dropped at you. When you yank open your desk drawer, the gloat inside is warming you like a bonfire. And then the freeze sets in. The check isn't paid. You've got as much chance of having Pat believe you now as a defendant in a Moscow first trial. You're in it alone, and it's all up to you. You don't even have a retainer fee now, but... You're out after a bigger payoff than just Joe. You're going to have your first meeting with Mrs. Judson. Please sit down, Mr. Hammond. Laura Judson is everything a husband said she was and then some. The tight white silk dress she wears is as appropriate as a shimmy dancer at a D.A.R. convention. May I offer you a drink? No, thanks. You don't mind if I have one? It's your liquor. The very best. You sure you won't join me? Sure. Who are you, Mr. Hammond? How do you know you really want to drink to me, Mrs. Judson? I take my chances. I'm a gambler. Me? Yeah, I only bet on sure things. Your life must be quite dull. Yes, at the moment. But it could stand some brightness. And do you have some suggestions? Maybe. I believe you said your first name was Mike. I hate formality. This I can see, Mrs. Judson. Laura, please. Well, Mike? To you. Drawing yourself, Mr. Fenner. Oh, you're referring to my late husband. Hey, you have a remarkable memory. You sound embittered. And you sound... Heartless? I guess that word will do. We all have to go sometime. Sometimes we get shoved before our time. Accidents will happen. Some accidents shouldn't happen. That's a strange remark, Mike. It was a strange accident. Not according to the police. Just an everyday accident. Maybe that's because the cops don't know all they should know. And you? Me? I know more than is good for you. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. I'm a private investigator. Then you came here under false pretenses. You said you were a friend of Mark. From the way things look, I was the only friend he had. I take it then he had employed you to spy on me. Mm. To keep an eye on him. I flunked out on him last night, so he's dead. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Sure you do. And you've got a good reason to be afraid. Of what? There are a lot of legitimate ways of getting rid of a husband. Murder isn't one of them. I thought I was going to like you. Now I'm sorry you ever came. Believe me, you're going to be even sorrier, Mrs. Judson. And that goes for your blonde-haired boyfriend in space. Get out of here. Get out immediately. <laughs> Taken on. I'm his release. 
You were on duty last night? Uh huh, that's right. I remember taking anybody up to my office? Uh, you're on the 14th floor. That's right, room 1405. Uh huh. Don't remember taking anybody up there. Well, somebody was there. I uh, couldn't do it by me. You went up there and stopped this trip. Huh? I said, stop it. What's the idea? You got the pair of keys. Who'd you land under my place last night? I told you. I, I don't remember taking anybody up there. Okay, I'll give you my quick and easy memory card. Let me go. Let me go. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Of course, get harder as I go along. <laughs>
up. When will you let your guard down? All right, I'm up. We're uh, going after some fresh air. The fresh air he talks about is an alley down the block. An alley with a dead end. It's crazy to get in this deep. How about you? I can take care of myself. What a chump will do for a then. Well, that depends on the day. You're just one guy in a long chain. You won't be the last link either. I'll take my chances. Getting away with murder is a long shot. Mm-hmm. They just don't pay off big enough. Maybe the next guy in the chain will figure the same way. Where will I believe you? I told you I'll take my chances. Now you start taking yours. His gun here is punctuates the sentences for him. Go ahead. Add yourself some exercise. He rides down towards the blank wall at the end of the alley. You've got nothing to lose, so you make your bid. Just kick up and out and get him through the road of the top line. Hey, we're flexing into a jack knife. You come down hard with the heel of your hand on the next bit. <laughs> oh, fuck, I like that. You lift the gun out of his hand, shove him with your foot and come up to drag himself up. All right. Don't shoot. He starts to get up, but he doesn't get to the kneeling position. You hear the slug? Kick into him. You don't need a second look to see that he's never going to get up again. He can't make it out. As far as you can see, you're the only one in the alley besides him. But you never squeezed the trigger. You didn't fire that shot. You phone Pat Chambers and give him the details. You tell him where he can pick up the final pieces of the story in an hour, and then you're off and running to the judge's place. I told you to stay away from here. Or a judge who starts to slam the door in your face, but you shove it back and walk in. If you don't leave immediately, I'll call the police. You don't have to bother. I've already sent for the cops. Yes, what do you want? You, for a couple of minutes alone. I want the personal pleasure of telling you it didn't work, none of it. I haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking about. I'm still talking about killing your husband in that phony accident. And I'm talking about you getting rid of the only one who could put the finger on you, a guy named Terry. Terry? I don't know anyone named Terry. This is all perfectly ridiculous. I don't know where you get your ideas from. I got them first from a dead man. But now they're going to stand up and be counted as living ideas. When Pat gets there, you hand her over to him. You're making a terrible mistake. You'll find out. You'll find out, all right, just what a mistake it isn't when one of Pat's boys locates the murder gun in her dresser drawer. So, it's all over. Pat takes her and you get in your suit and drive back to town. You get as far as the west side drive and then you turn back. You don't know what it is, but something draws you back to the Judson place like a magnet. Call it fate, give it any name. When you left, the house was dark. Now there's a light on in one of the upstairs rooms. You park your car off the main road and walk up to the house. You move slowly through the darkened hall to the door with a crack of light to the street. Unlocked. You don't know what to expect. You turn the knob softly and then you kick the door open. Ever. This is the last thing you expect. Mark Judson is seated at the dresser. And he holds a photograph of his wife. A photograph he was about to rip to pieces. For a second everything jumbles in your mind like a crazy jigsaw puzzle. And then the pieces fall into sensible shape. What is they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? That goes for the worst plans, too, Judson. I imagine we're both equally surprised. Why'd you come back here? I really can't explain why I did. But I suppose that isn't important now. Terrible mistake. Your wife was right. But as I planned it, no one would believe her. She was telling the truth. She didn't know that guy. No, no, but she could have. He was a man, young, handsome. You killed him in that alley? I had to. I didn't need him any longer. Besides, I had to keep you alive. And the body in that car crash is standing. Yes. However, that wasn't my original plan. I I was going to kill myself in that crash. Then I realized I wouldn't be able to enjoy her torment if I were really dead. If I were dead, there'd be so little satisfaction for me in her ultimate punishment for my murder. Satisfaction. You don't know what it is to live with a woman like that, being laughed at, being used for a fool, having every man that comes along flung in your face. I couldn't have her. I made up my mind no other man would either. I had to have some kind of satisfaction. Are you out of Judson? 
for what it was worth up to now.